Welcome to the exciting and new podcast. I'm Jason. I'm Andy. And I'm Brian. And we're here to talk to you about movies that happened 40 years ago. <laughs> Are you ready? Any particular? Yeah, today oh. um, we got a little uh, a musical, actually, I would, I, I would call it. Uh, the Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, uh, released on July 23rd, 1982. Uh, rated R. One hour, 54 minutes. I believe that. That rated R is a weak rated R. There's yeah. maybe one scene with yes. nudity. One scene with female nudity. There's yes. way too much male nudity, but um, yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. Up until that last scene where there were actually boobs, can I was we, like, uh, can we, why uh, is this movie Can we even? isolate that, what Brian just said there? <laughs> I was like, why is this movie R? There was no cursing, no violence. No, but nothing. there was some really good music because yeah, that music, music had your toes a-tapping. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you're. It's a it's a musical, flat out. It's the best musical that came out in 1982. That's for sure. Oh, take that, Grease Two, <laughs> take that, Dana. Oh man, calling her out. <laughs> she kept saying that you were calling her out. So this time, I figured I would call her out. <sighs> Charles Durning's song was my favorite. It was a great song. His song was so long, I was surprised. <laughs> it was, he was, and and it was like his entirety on screen. <laughs> well, singing that like song. 45 minutes in the movie, I was like, I know Charles Durning's in this. Like, don't tell me that yeah. that picture of him shaking hands with Dom DeLuise <laughs> was the only t- like. Was that it? <laughs> was his this? name, his name in the credits is Governor. Oh, it doesn't even it, give his name. Does he have any like <laughs> speaking governor. lines besides the song? Besides- I think every time he's about to like. Talk is when he goes in oh, the song, oh, right? He, he, yeah. yeah, he talks because the voters, he goes by what the polls say. That's right. Yeah. I, I do remember that now. So he did his little sidestep uh, before he was <laughs> saying. That was that was a great. He was jumping all over it the place. It was directed by uh, Colin Higgins. Um, his top four, he was the writer for his top four. So I'll just give him to you because you're probably not going to get him. But uh, Nine to Five. Oh, um, okay. Harold and Maud. Foul Play. Damn. And uh, Silver good. Streak. Wow, you good movies. All four all of those. Movies. I wonder if that's how he met Dolly Parton. He only directed three movies. The three movies he directed were this one, uh, Nine to Five, and Foul Play. So he directed three of those comedies. Yeah, Foul Play was a great movie. He um he died young, nineteen eighty eight. He was forty seven. Oh damn, way too young. Died from AIDS. Oh. Brian would have been dead for five years already by now. Wow. It's true. <laughs> you would have missed all this excitement over the last five years. Just imagine that. I know. You would have not, you, COVID. <laughs> COVID. This podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jason and I would still be looking at each other going like, so uh, how do you do that? Like, so what do you, what have you been listening to lately? <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to hear this. Um, which call it here we got it wasn't streaming anywhere for free mm-hmm. um so you had to either rent it or I, ha- it. I had it on dvd did you oh. have it on dvd yes. i have a gigantic question to ask just because Go of something it. i read no, no no we'll get to it we'll get to it we'll get okay to it. so i had here peter, it's in my notes. peter masterston <laughs> and tommy toon who'd helmed the original broadway production oh, okay were initially hired to co-direct a film However, Universal executives got cold feet due to the duo's lack of film experience. Hmm. Colin Higgins was later given the job as a result of his writing and directing work on the wildly successful comedy Nine to Five in 1980, which also starred Miss Dolly Parton. I don't think you've given the synopsis for this movie yet. Um, no, I was getting that was. Oh, next. you were getting to that? Okay. That was because that, that people related, don't even know what's going on. That related to the director. That's oh, okay. why That's I, fine. I thought that was interesting. I didn't want to get too far into this. But, uh, like, why do they keep saying our, our IMDb <laughs> description is a town sheriff and regular patron of a historical whorehouse fights to keep it running when a television reporter targets it as the devil's playhouse. The and, I, and they made IMDb it sound like it was the only whorehouse in Texas. They so. had a song specifically saying <laughs> Texas has a whorehouse. Yeah, so. Texas is pretty big. It, it's gigantic, <laughs> which is actually one of the funnier things in this movie because, like, Burt Reynolds is like, I'm going to Houston. 
I'm going to Austin. That's like from us saying like I'm going to Charlotte or I'm going to <laughs> bo- like Boston. Like it's not right around the corner. It's like I'm getting on a plane a and I gotta fly <laughs> halfway across this big ass state. So just when he said that, he's like, I'm going to I'm going to Houston. I'm like, I don't know. The, I I know actually where this takes place, but I don't know where that is actually in Texas. Maybe it's. <laughs> in the town next to Houston for all I know, yeah, but yeah. it didn't look it. It looked like it was way out. This is in the actually in Gilbert, Texas. Gilbert, Texas. Yeah. Is that a real place? I believe it is. Oh, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that though, but maybe if you want to look oh, it up, yeah, I can try. That. I heard something yeah. else about where this is. What did you hear? I heard this is in a town called LaGrange. LaGrange. Because it's after and ZZ, uh, Top ZZ Top made the song LaGrange after the same whorehouse that was a real whorehouse and yes really the the plot of this is now you have me confused i don't know where i heard gilbert oh i don't know maybe maybe that's where they filmed it or something like that yeah all right so uh, um we'll get right into the cast which uh you had just mentioned the sheriff ed earl uh that was played by burt reynolds um he uh his top four do you want to uh take Mm. a stab at his top four there brian the one the old which guy Burt Reynolds. Oh, okay. Uh, Ed L. Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Earl. Cannonball Run's got to be there. Sheriff Ed Earl Dodd. Ed Earl. Ed Earl. Ed Earl and they had Dodd. to say Ed Earl every time. Ed especially, Earl. Especially Ed Dolly. Earl. She had Ed to Earl. say it every time. I'm like, Ed just call him Ed. Ed. Just call him Ed. It's fine. Uh, Brian said Cannonball Run. What did you say? Cannonball Run. It's got to be. It's got to be. Is not in his top four. <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. Is in his top four. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Oh, but still, I mean, come on. What do you got? What do you got? What else was he in? Oh my god, he was in a million other things. <laughs> You're kidding. Uh, oh, right? uh, the what? The football one. Uh, Long yard. Yeah. Okay. That is not in his top four. How about um, um, hmm. boogie nights? Boogie nights is in his top wow. four. Wow, nice. nice pull. What do you got, Brian? Another Burt Reynolds movie. I think uh, the one with Demi Moore or Demi Moore. Oh, wow. That's in there? Okay. I wouldn't have thought that. I don't know that one. Striptease? Striptease. Oh, he yeah. was in Striptease? He's like the governor or something like yeah. that. So what do we got so far? Cannibal Run, Striptease, got, and Boogie no. Nights? Smoking or Smoking the, the Bandit, Bandit, yeah. Striptease, Boogie Nights, and One Last One. <sighs> well, I Is can, it his sitcom? I can name it's a not, million things. No. Is it The End? Is it... Uh, Deliverance. It is Deliverance. Oh, oh okay. that's right. He was in Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Burt Reynolds was a gigantic star from like the mid 70s I mean, to the so, late 80s. I mean, oh, he yeah. was Cannibal Run. I mean, you'd mentioned St- Stroker Ace. Stroker uh, Ace. You yes. know, Six Pack, I believe. Six uh, Pack. I saw that in the theater. You know, yeah. <laughs> there was so ma- He was in so many fun movies. Um, too. Uh, I mean, and what was his TV show? He was like uh, Empty Nest or something. Turner? No. Wasn't it like him retired down yeah, in like some, the Keys yeah, of Georgia? Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, Oh, yeah. was it Georgia? Maybe it was Georgia. I never, never watched it. But. Something I remember. I could see Evening Shade. Evening, Evening Shade. Shade. Oh my god! Nice. Did you see? I don't know where it came from. <laughs> I looked up here and it just came into me. I Jesus like, touched <laughs> Jason's head and just said, "That's like what." And then people's like, "Why do you remember things like that?" I have no <laughs> fucking idea. Because he's smoking that fucking vape pen like it's going whoop, out of whoop, style. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I'm not the only one. What was the um? <laughs> Damn, there's something else I wanted to remember about Burt Reynolds. Mm. Oh yeah, that he was supposed to be Han Solo, oh. but turned it down. I, didn't he yeah. do a Playgirl shoot too? He did. I wonder if his wang was hanging out. Did Playgirl do full frontal? <laughs> I know he was laying on like a bear, like yeah. a bear, like a bear rug or whatever, like a yeah. bear skin rug or whatever you call it. Hmm. He had, uh, he had a pretty good swagger. <laughs> Let me tell you, 1982 hairy. Burt Reynolds was hot man. He uh, was smoking hot when he was in that in Dar- Dolly's bed. He was smoking in a room. He was yes. smoky, all right. He was smoky. <laughs> well, we have uh, playing Mona Stangley. He is bandit. Mona Stangley, Dolly Parton. Miss I know her. I know her. She's uh, her top four. I don't think you're going to get any anything other than nine, nine to five. five. Yeah. The show Dolly was in there twice because it's two different shows that she had. Like her, was like, it like a variety show or something? Kind of like thing, or oh, something like that. Oh, okay. Well, and then uh, the Porter Wagner show. And, oh, uh, my God. I might have got married, that. She's married to uh, Porter Wagner, was my dad's 
still is probably my dad's favorite country artist. Oh, yeah. And I remember growing up, he had Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton. That's uh, what you wrote that tapes. last song to. Yeah. Uh, um, I will always, I always love, love you. you. Yeah. Yeah. But that uh, was awesome. I was in this uh, movie as well. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, 10 years old at the time. It was in this movie, though. Like, And it was, like I guess, done a little differently. I guess you'd say in a different. She re-recorded. A different arrangement. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, Porter Wagner. Go nice. on. Um, that's so all Dolly Parton. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's all I had for her top four yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing else for her. Yeah, I mean. Dolly she, Parton's like one of those people that's been around Ryan, forever. Ryan Stone, uh, it was that Rhinestone Cowboy, Cowboy with right? Stallone, yeah. right? I remember that movie Never when saw I was that. younger. She was just on the Orville. Oh, was, was she, she on that? Really? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> like we were as talk- herself i gotta check that show out too i was thinking about uh checking that one out because i saw yeah. that's on hulu as well I yeah think. that is really we've been show. talking yeah. about dolly parton recently in the last like year about like is Who's she the late? new is she the new um like new old Betty person oh, yeah. that we're like that everybody loves everybody she's loves not dolly even parton. that old though yeah, she's like in her 70s, 75 yeah. at yeah. the most yeah, yeah. she's yeah. got like 20 years to get to yeah, to get to that Betty, Betty White, White level, uh, but yeah. everybody loves. The, no, no one has anything bad. To That's say what they. About everybody, her. everybody was saying that, like protect Dolly, better protect Dolly. You know? <laughs> She's got her own protection. <laughs> she has got a gigantic rack and makes yeah. at least two comments in this movie about. Oh that. yeah, that's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> Didn't when, she get uh, them reduced? Did she? She might have. She might have. Yeah. But that was like a big thing in the eighties, like jokes about Dolly Parton's yeah. chest. That was oh, a joke. Yeah. Like, That's all, what like, she was you, known for. Yeah, you'd hear jokes about that all the time. Like, you know, I don't want to say any of them here. I don't think I actually remember any, but. Yeah, I don't remember any. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I can remember any of them from when I was younger. I don't think I can remember any of them either right now. But anyway, she was, uh, she's stacked. Yes. Oh, she's yeah, like weirdly time. proportioned, too, because she's really like. Tiny she's got a down tiny below. Yeah, she's too. Tiny yeah, down like, below. Yeah, but then her hips wide. Her hips yeah. wide, and yeah. Um, she's always one of those people like i'm sure she was probably young in this like 30 ish but she always yeah, looks you like figure 40 years ago so yeah she's probably about 30, 35 she always 30, looks like a grandma to me even like in nine to five i remember that's watching it and just like that's that voice I why think. is she like an old lady or she the seems voice like an makes old her lady seem older, maybe think, that's what it is you know i've never like thought she's hot i know speaking of hot, hot dom we DeLuise young, but, played melvin in this man. one <laughs> I loved one, Del- my, one of my Steve. favorite scenes in this movie was the him getting ready to go out on stage and putting the girdle on <laughs> and this in the in the, the Sergeant Pepper jacket and <laughs> cupping it underneath and I remember thinking halfway through this movie I'm like he does all this preparation for his look and he's got that shitty ass <laughs> wig on like why does he want to look like Mo Howard got that his hair cut by a hair blind guy was so oh like so what when, are you doing when Bert pulls like it off monk. and throws it off it's like nice I'm like they got rid of that stupid wig uh, um, Cannibal Run is in his top four oh so you would have got that one his top four is a little tougher though Whew. but is uh, Fatso no is um oh fuck i had some is, probably is, only get one other one is johnny dangerously no uh, robin hood men in tights no blazing Saddles. i was gonna god damn it i was on the tip of my tongue i know he's in a mel brooks movie man he's one of my favorite scenes in that yeah, oh the god were, he's, uh, they got the dance number going secret of that. nim and all dogs <laughs> go to heaven uh, both those are voice um, actors yeah I guess. so i didn't see those who are we talking about again? <laughs> oh, fuck, man. Dom oh, DeLuise. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dom D. Louise. <laughs> oh, what movie man. did you just mention he was in? Blazing Saddles. Peter DeLuise's dad? He's the director of the play <laughs> that the da- the dance dancers oh, are practicing. That's right. When they come and he's b- like bouncing yes. through the wall. And he has one of the he's best in a lines. He's silent movie, too. Remember that? He is in silent movie, yeah. yeah. His line in Blazing Saddles is one it's one of the best lines of a movie ever. <laughs> and I won't quote it here, but it is so funny. That one will be quoted <laughs> off the air. <laughs> I'm sure I've got 15 texts of that right now. All right. Um, did I mention Charles Durning as the governor? Well, we mentioned his dance, his song and dance. Yeah. Oh, he put on a song and dance. All right. But I, I first, I forgot to mention Dom DeLuise died in 2009. He was 75, and it was a oh. com- co- kidney failure and respiratory complications from cancer. How about Bert? When did he die? You have that there? Bert really died, uh, yeah, he was 82 uh, in 2018, and it was a heart attack. Wow, 2018? That that seems like that was just like a couple 
I guess it was a couple of years ago. Yeah. A couple four. Yeah. Pre, Pre-COVID. Right before COVID. Yeah, I remember that. <sighs> um, so Chuck Durning, he played the governor. His top four. Um, you probably know these. All uh, these. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. China Syndrome. That's a good Maybe one. Maybe except one. But no, that is not in his top four. Tootsie. Not in his top four. Hmm. Gotta be, oh brother, where art thou? Is in his top oh, four. Happy O'Daniel. He is awesome in that too. <laughs> I uh, have not seen Hang that on, movie. hang on, hang on. He is in. God damn it, man. Come on now, come on now. No know. dead air, I no can't dead air. Or anything else. No dead air, come on now. But I love him. Like, I love Charles Dern. I'm going to be so pissed when oh, you I'm tell me. I'm going to start saying them. Are you ready for no, it? No, yeah, start saying them. State and Maine. I figured you probably wouldn't get that one. No. State, you got, oh, brother, that, where man. art thou? State and Maine? I've never, yeah. never even heard of that. The no. Muppet movie. <laughs> yeah, he is in that. And He's the bad guy, right? This He's one, the one that wants to make frog I love him in this, I love this movie, too. Dog Day Afternoon. Uh, oh, yes, he is in Dog Day Afternoon. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah. That Brady just watched it. Did, Did he? he really? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. He liked it. Okay, good. I was oh, going to say, ah! Charles Durney had one of those. I mean, he was like a song and dance man probably for 20 years before he ever did anything we know, but he had a really good career. He was always one of those guys when you saw him. He was, he was pretty um, much all song and this. I remember he was oh, in yeah. um, oh, some terrible Leslie Nielsen movie. Not any of the Naked oh, Gun movies. Like Spy Hard yeah, or something It might have like been Spy Hard, and he's in that. And I remember just being like, the scene he's in, I'm like, this is a much better movie because Charles Durning's in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> if it was anybody else playing it, you wouldn't have yeah, enjoyed I it as much. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, up next, we have well, Golly. Gomer Pyle. <laughs> <laughs> like, we have to guess who that Jim is. Jim <laughs> Neighbors, he played Deputy Fred. And they always had to say Deputy Fred. Deputy Fred. Hey, Deputy Fred. And he's pretty much the narrator, too. <laughs> yeah. He narrates throughout this. Because uh, if you're paying for Jim Neighbors, you're getting that voice as much. Yeah, you want. Like, he's he got is, that voice. He's got a voice, man. I would I, love. But it's a, a put on too. Story I mean, from, that's that's Gomer's oh, yeah. voice too. So it's like, why are you just putting that on? <laughs> Wasn't he a jewel thief too? Did and you ever hear boat? That's right. He was a jewel thief <laughs> yeah. with that same voice. Did you ever hear him sing? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he well, sang. I heard him sing. He's that. His voice, he's makes a voice him of an out. angel. Yeah. yeah. Um. He died in 2017. Oh, wow. Hmm. 87 immune system deficiencies. Forgot to mention Chuck Durning, 2012, 89. Nice. Natural causes. Well, most of these guys have lived long lives. I think Dom yeah. Delaware, 75, is a little young, but he uh, he lived a good life. He's, that's a lot young. So Jim Neighbors' top five or top four is... Got to be Gomer Pyle. Got to be yeah. probably Mayberry can, RF. Can you tell me how many episodes of Gomer Pyle USMC he was in? That's a really good question. I'm going to say 55. Oh, I'm going over. I'm, that that had to have been at least a three-year show. I'm going to say 80. 150 episodes. Wow. How many yeah. does that? Do you know how many seasons or not? I think it was like that, seven seasons. That six long, or seven huh? seasons. Yeah. <coughs> That's awesome. Um, Never watched one episode of Gore Pile ever. Really? Yeah. Best, I did watch maybe Best Little uh, Warhouse uh, is in his top four. Oh, okay. Um, Stroker Ace is in his top four. Um, can you tell me how many episodes he was in? This was also in his top four. The Andy Griffith Show. How many episodes of the Andy Griffith Show? Now, that was on for at least eight or nine seasons. Yeah, but he was a part-time Andy player. Griffith, I got a definite yeah. number, but I'm going to let Brian guess first because he's going to say, I was going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to say. Uh, and this way, if he's 132. Way off, oh, I'm saying way. I'm saying 20. He was in. 23 episodes Ooh, wow. of Andy Griffith. Yeah, he Pretty was like good. a part-time guy, and then they spun him right off. Yeah. That means he was only on like three episodes a But season. I don't think he, well, was, I don't think he was on past, every season. Like yeah. after season three, oh, okay. he was yeah. probably on Gomer Pyle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he spun off of that. Spinning. Um, Up next is somebody we had from The Love Boat, and in a recent movie, he was in Zapped, Robert Mandon. I playing I Will Senator, Ames. I missed him. Playing Senator Wingwood. Yes, because, he was. Uh, he had a good role. I I enjoyed his role. Yeah, yeah I thought was, he was funny. Yeah, he was fun, especially when he got caught in the Hua house. Yeah, with the did cameras. I, I mentioned so, Jim so. Neighbors passing right eighty yes, seven. Okay, yeah. Um, Robert Mandon he passed in twenty eighteen. Man, these guys have all recently died. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 86. except for Dom Deluise, they were all in the last five years. Eighty six, and he had prostate cancer. Oh, you don't want to get you don't want to yeah. get that. 
I know someone with that. Everybody has been dead so far except for Dolly Parton. Dolly, watch out. <laughs> Protect the, Dolly. Right? There's We're one other person that's still alive that I know is in this movie, but I don't know if you have him written down there. Um, did we do his top four? Uh, I think we may have done it on a recent, so I'll just go through it real quick. Uh, soap. Oh, okay. Uh, right, best right. Little Whorehouse is in his top nice. four. Uh, Star Trek Deep Space number nine. Number nine. Number nine. He was on Deep Space Nine. Yeah, yes. Probably in one episode or something like that. Yeah. And uh, just got him three's a up crowd. Again. Three's a crowd. Yes. Oh. Jack's father-in-law. Uh, up next was Lois Nettleton. She played Dulce May. We could just skip over her, really. Oh, she's she might still be alive. She probably she, wants to hear. She her did not four. stay alive. She died <laughs> in 2008. How dare she not stay alive? Which one's who is this? She was Dulce May. That was his uh, girl back home. Oh, uh, you know what? That's one of those plots that like they didn't spell that out. And then it there was, was weird. Why did he have there to was, cheat? There was one scene Why where he's he like be with her? sitting with the kid watching TV, and I'm like Thanksgiving. I'm like, yeah. who's this kid all of a sudden? And then Dolly spells it out like at the end of the movie where they're fighting. She's like, you got that fake family. With to, I'm like, if you is that to- what that was? I had no idea what any since of that you, was. Since you brought it, it up, it wasn't worked in well. Since you brought it up, can you tell me who was playing on the uh, uh, at, on the uh, Thanksgiving uh, college football game they were oh, watching? Oh, I can. And can you tell me the score? That I can. And can, can you tell me who won? I can tell you who won. I can tell you who was playing. I, I think it was Texas was playing. <laughs> and they were playing against two Texas. Texas, is correct. Texas. They were playing against Texas. Texas versus Texas. <laughs> It was uh, Texas A and M. It was the Aggies. Oh, they they, they kept saying the Aggies. Yeah. And what was the score? Twenty-eight to twenty-one. At, at I, I want to say wasn't time, it fourteen? It was fourteen. It was twelve. 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 It was twelve. Uh, it was and did 12, someone kick 12. a field goal? I don't and even remember they how the game won it on a touchdown. So it was eighteen. Twelve was the final. So how do you get twelve? That's like two touchdowns with you not scoring Missed, the extra back point. in the, back in the old days. Like extra they points weren't a guarantee, yeah. and you went for uh, two and. Yeah, it wasn't as easy as it is now. You missed the first one, and you go for two, and then he missed the two, so that's usually what happened, probably. Uh-huh. But, Especially um, for college. Yeah. Now they so, just go for but two. But it was uh, the Aggies ended up winning. So yeah. Who was the other team? Texas. Texas. Oh. Texas Longhorns. So it was, te- it Texas, was Texas against Texas. Yeah, it was okay. Texas. and That's why I kept saying Texas. But again, but. <laughs> look on a map and look where Texas and Texas A&M are, and I bet they're so far away, and one of them is driving a bus to a whorehouse. Like, those kids are going to be on that bus for like <laughs> 12 say, hours. They did say it was a few hour ride, though. Remember? <laughs> yeah, they did. I think that. it was like a four hour. So, something. really, that is the only whorehouse in Texas. They're driving out of a major <laughs> metropolitan area to drive to some chicken ranch out way out in the nowheres. In the nowheres? A mile outside of Gilbert. <laughs> Uh, I'll bring um, up. Uh, um, she um, she um, played um, Jewel um, or Porky. Oh yeah, uh, Teresa Merritt. Billy, her yeah, top four. Her. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Or, yes. or maid or whatever. Yeah. Uh, she was also in The Wiz. She was Emma or uh, Annie M. The Goodbye Girl. Uh, oh, with uh, Richard Dreyfus and uh, all that jazz. Uh, no diamond. I forgot. Uh, Lori Nettleton died in two thousand eight. She was eighty from lung cancer. Oh, and who was that? That was uh, oh the the, the May, mistress yeah. or whatever. And uh, Jewel Porky, unnecessary Porky. She died in nineteen ninety eight. Uh, she Man. was only seventy five. And right after, from, ha, what's Billy Madison know. like? Ninety five. She six? died from yeah. skin cancer. Ooh. Damn, that could not Damn. have been good, right? Nah, I mean, that's got to suck. Skin so. cancer, just like chop it off and. There's another layer under there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just take care of that. Playing <laughs> CJ was Barry Corbin. Ah, uh, this is my one guy where I was like, I know this guy. He was <laughs> the only that guy other guy. He has that face. You know him, and he's been in everything. And he was oh, yeah. in the barber's chair at the beginning of the first thing, and I'm like, I know who that is, and he's not going to be in the rest of this movie. But then he's in the. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, he's in the movie. But he yeah. had already been in Northern Exposure. Well, that was after this, but he had already been the warden in Stir Crazy by this point. So yeah. he was. That, that's not like, his top four. His top four is tough. Um, wait, hang on. He, but he was in something else because I think I actually put it in my notes. Go for it. Let's see Should, what you got. Pull him out. Wait, pull wait, him wait. Out. But he was. Andy, the, don't pull that no, out. No, what are you no, doing, no. Andy? No, because I know Ryan. <laughs> he is a military guy in something else. God damn it! I got to look it up. I don't want to look it up. I put it in my notes, though, so it's not really cheating because I wrote it down. No, that's what your notes are for. Oh, yeah. he is the general in war games. 
Oh yeah. So I, I had I remember I had from crazy, that. It's not in this top I put, four. I put either. Stir really? Crazy yeah. Warden and War Games General. Yeah, th- neither of those are in his top four. Is Northern Exposure because he was on that no, show for but years? Like Yellowstone, I don't watch that. Oh wow! But now I want to watch it if he's in it. Um, the Ranch. Oh, oh the right. one with Ashton Kutcher and yeah. Sam so Elliott or something, and uh, also uh, the hmm. other guy that. Uh, oh, uh, hi, uh, yeah. Billy Masterson. Yeah, the one that's yeah. like accused of rape, rape by like five yeah. different women. Yeah, nine one one Lone Star. Lone Star. Oh, wait, that's a nine one one show. Oh, uh, Lone hmm. Star. Yeah. And uh, No Country for Old Men. Oh, wow. He is in that. That's a great movie, too. The last person I had in the cast I wanted to talk about is my favorite. My favorite. uh, I know who you're going to I'm I'm glad you're going to recommend her because I got somebody else. Mary Jo Catlett. I'm bringing up here. She plays Rita. Yeah. Uh, and her top four, I was a little upset. SpongeBob. I was gonna say she's Miss Pearl for <laughs> sure. SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants movie made it in there, but then it was Serial Mom, Let's Be Cops, and Benchwarmers. So she was oh, funny. that's right, she is in Benchwarmers. She's, Benchwarmers. Yes, she's yes. a mom at the top yep. of the steps. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no different strokes mentioned, huh? No different strokes. Yeah, I thought that was. Uh, well, the world don't move uh, to the beat of just one drum, so we have to move on from that. <laughs> oh, so you had somebody else you wanted to bring up? I don't even know if you see this woman's face, but I heard her call the oh, governor. Wait, this is the voice you yes, heard. He yeah. said, "She said, Governor Earl Ed Earl's outside to see you." And as soon as I heard that voice, I'm like, "I know this oh, voice." Oh, like the speaker thing? No, she was. You, he's in his office, the governor. After I, I guess after having done his song and dance, oh and, yeah, the, and the fire's know, going and you see her talking, talking and then it's in the mirror, so you don't, you, when you, you never fi- get a good. And I, I was like, just spin around. As soon as you spin around and see her, I know exactly who it is. But then they they cut, and so you never actually see I a good shot from of her. One other who was movie? It is Ray Finkel's mom from ace ventura pet detective that's right she was also in that. dan marino should burn in hell did I was you like, look it up no, i i knew her voice yeah. i knew who she was i was like i know but did you look it up this to confirm says. it or no oh yeah it's it her, her for sure i don't know if she's in anything else but <laughs> ghostbusters she's the librarian oh, she is a librarian <laughs> right yeah but i don't know that's how i got wow, her from, just from, from voice. her voice nice. oh. yeah but then i had to go like into See, that I could make fun of him, like I know Carol Martin, right? So I know Miss, I know Carol Brady's made a name, but him knowing that, that's crazier. <laughs> him being able to do that, yeah. Oh man, oh my god! Just by her voice, you know. <laughs> I, I have a question about. So I don't know where we are in this podcast. That's I, it for the cast. I okay. had. We could talk. Let's talk movie now. I'm let's running out of notes it. already because half mine's it. the cast. No, keep uh, talking. But, but one thing I wanted to ask you about. On your copy of um, <laughs> Best Little Horrors in Texas, I just forgot what we were doing. Uh, does Burt Reynolds have a solo? Like a him, because the only thing I remember him singing was the song with him and Dolly in her bedroom. I don't, I don't know if he has a solo. Okay, because apparently he sang a song, Where the Stallions Run, but it said in wherever I saw this, IMDb or Wikipedia, that only certain copies got that. Apparently, there were three songs sung that got cut out of the movie. Burt really? Reynolds' solo song, wow. Where Stallions Run, I, I, got cut. I don't I don't recall seeing yeah, it. Did okay. you? No, no, I definitely did. Yeah, it wasn't so was, in the version I watched. So I was yeah. wondering if, like, who got that cut? Like, the extended yeah, edition and like, or is whatever? That, and, like, and is it worth cut? it? Like, uh, get rid of that cut, you know? They're like, I kind of, I wonder if those are on uh, YouTube. Because Burt Reynolds hey, didn't have a bad on, voice yeah, in that maybe song. Maybe they're on YouTube. It's so funny, you know, musicals of that era. It's so obvious. I mean, I, I get it, but they're lip syncing. Like, it's almost like you hear, like, what am I talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. And they start singing, and you can almost hear the record, like, like the needle goes on. And <laughs> the voice gets louder, and you're like, yeah, wow, you didn't film this in the same day, I guess, the voiceover. Um, I had something I wanted to bring up, because you know how you brought up something last week about Anything pertaining to the uh, Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. I have something related to the Twilight Zone oh. and this movie. 
Was that house used in the Twilight Zone movie or something the like that? The release date of this film is July 23rd, 1982, the same day of the accident that killed actor Vic Morrow <laughs> and two children on the set of Twilight Zone, the movie. And we've had a lot of Twilight Zone, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Almost every one of the, every podcast. Well, I know, I know Fast Times, it. we talked about his daughter. Yeah. And then last week, something with Beastmaster. Like, that's when he brought it up. Yeah, the uh, that's where they filmed. They filmed the Cambodia scene or the Vietnam scene where the kids got killed right there in the lake that they were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or the stream he was running. Through. Yeah, wow. And now this. It's like, well, <laughs> Yikes! Uh, eating Raul, watch out! Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny for those families, Jason. <laughs> it's funny for Raul. <laughs> um. Children I, died uh, uh, while filming the ending. Only two. While filming the ending scene of this, for this movie, Burt Reynolds got a double hernia <laughs> from picking up Dolly Parton. Oh, I was wondering that when he picked he her up to put her, her in the truck, he got, he got a double hernia. I believe it. He often joked to Dolly that he'd think of her every time he got a pang of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to see the outtakes of him picking her up and going, oh, <laughs> just dropping her. That had to hurt oh, yeah. so much. He didn't I look mean. comfortable carrying her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have the chicken ranch, the house, the chicken ranch. That was uh, the same uh, house that was used in House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, I you tell oh. Same house. So that Twilight one's for, Zone. I thought that, we covered that already. That <laughs> one's for Dana as well. House of a Thousand Corpses. She was just talking about how much she hated that movie. Yeah. Much, uh, uh, Rob Zombie. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. I thought that's, it was that, a fun that's, movie. Maybe, that's probably his best. I never best, saw that one. That's probably his best movie. You ever saw that one? No. Nah. I didn't see the sequel to that. The um, I saw Devil's Rejects. Devil's Rejects. I that was good that. as well. There's a third one now. Oh, I, I did not see, see the third one. Six, six, six or something like that. I think it's called. I don't know. That's, that's a terrible. Too, that's name. too cool for me, man. Yeah, that's a terrible name. So cool, man. <laughs> Has six 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 been cool since like Iron Maiden? I don't even know if that's the song? name of the movie. There's a root so- six 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 over, <laughs> over here. Is it really? Because that'd be cool. I want to go over there and take a picture. So it's I was just say Croshaw, how cool it is. Croshaw Road is it's Route six six six, but they don't put up signs because they people come and steal stolen for so many years. Like the Howard Stern rest stop that everybody stole the signs <laughs> yes. from, so they just stopped putting it up. Andy was already thinking about going to steal one. I, I was, was going like, to take I'll a help. selfie in front of me. Like, look how cool I am. 666, man. Put this and, on the Instagram, man. And Put it on made in. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys got? Anything? I mean, I don't want to just keep talking. I mean, am I the only one talking? I, I have am something. I, I watch this movie? I, I mean, have one big on. note uh, The that the football players, yes. after watching them how, dance, how, how I cannot ever see them enjoying themselves at, <laughs> at a female board. I got to tell you. <laughs> Yes. How long was this movie? Like an hour and fifty minutes. Yeah, hour an 54. hour and thirty minutes into this movie, I was like, "Man, I have seen so many naked men asses," <laughs> and that's false advertising with the best little whorehouse in Texas. You figure it's going to be a lot of naked oh, women, yeah. and then finally, we saw maybe two sets of breasts. Yes, oh, yeah. and it's long after you look at like asses. fifty naked guys' asses. Yeah. I was like, "This is like the reverse Porky's or the reverse um, what are the ramped." What zap 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 yeah <laughs> that scene I, I bit my pillow and, and just like turn around turn around <laughs> apparently I think you can see a guy's wiener in there oh because they're all is that something that you seen I didn't see that I didn't catch that yeah I wasn't looking that close <laughs> I saw no wieners <laughs> I heard that uh but, but they were gay as hell <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe the, the little bow t- th- you know. Things tied around their neck that, that were glitter. They were glitter colored. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that, I guess. Oh, really? I don't notice those kinds of things, Brian. Oh, oh that's true. You are much better than me. <laughs> Jim, Jim Neighbors made uh, three movies with uh, Burt Reynolds. Uh, can you name the other two? Well, Stroker Ace is definitely one of them. And Cannibal Run 2. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's in Cannibal Run. I didn't too. think you were gonna get like <laughs> everybody's in that one. Sinatra's in that. Cannibal Run has a great cast too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Cannibal Run's got a better cast, but everybody's in but the second one. Two is even worth to watch just because of the cast. I mean, yeah. But oh, it's such a bad movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Those paychecks must. That was really good. Nice. I didn't think you were gonna get the. Uh, <laughs> I figured you get stroke or ace, but I didn't think. I didn't think you get kind of all run too that fast. Yeah. Oh man, I love that movie. <laughs> do we get to do that? This movie went over budget. I saw that. This was based on a real, uh, a true story, sort of. There was a chicken ranch, and there was somebody that was trying uh, to expose it and everything. Yeah, like Don Del is definitely based on a real guy. Yeah. Uh, I saw that he only died like maybe in 2007 or eight or something I, like that, and he was like still he doing played this Melvin, shit. Melvin, who was yeah. from New Jersey. He oh. was. You should have learned that. Toupe was terrible. Oh, that's right. He did admit he was from New Jersey. He did. It plays good with his base, I think he said. Yeah. What a surprise. Texas <laughs> plays good with his base. <laughs> The exterior of the chicken ranch was a uh, was actually the universal lot where the Bates house from Psycho. Oh, it was uh, like filmed yeah. on the same street as the Bates yeah, house? The That's Bates awesome. house was right moved to, to a permanent location while filming began on Psycho 2. The set is still up on the universal lot as of 2011, so... That's 11 years ago when this was written. But. It's funny. The first note I have is one bird, <coughs> one lay, because that's what they were talking about. Like, you know, they would bring a chicken in and and get the bang. Yeah. yeah. That was good. I had. I, I got to tell you, best little that, whorehouse in Texas, 1982, whatever studio this is, Paramount or whoever it is, bravo for them to put that out, man, because that's like true. that is a name right there. I remember. When that came out, like that word was not being said. It was like, yeah. we're going to go see the new, like, Burt Reynolds movie. I wasn't, we're see yeah, the I wasn't being told we're going to go see yeah. Best Little Whorehouse yeah. in Texas. That was like, when I saw on HBO by myself. Yeah, those yeah. that name was HBO. not getting thrown around. Even like in 2022, I'm like, Whorehouse? I'm like, that's so, <laughs> hmm, you know what that is? <laughs> Brothel sounds so much classier. Oh, but yeah. uh, I, I'm surprised that it was released with that name. Because, Every yeah, that's, child that's every twelve year old that saw that as they were walking out of ET with their mom and I said, mean, "What's best little <laughs> whorehouse in Texas, mom?" And they were like, "The uh, butthole surfers had to go by BH surfers <laughs> for the longest time. Like they wouldn't yeah. even be talked about on like regular stream radio. Same. You know what I mean? Their mainstream radio, whatever you want to call it. But we are a weird, weird culture. It's, it's <laughs> it really is strange. Um, <laughs> you did call this uh, musical earlier." Which is correct. It was the most successful musical of the 80s. What was this competition besides Grease 2? I don't know. I'm sure there had <laughs> to be others. Especially in 82. I mean, there's definitely were some other. A- Annie. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised that didn't win. Annie right? was pretty big. That was a musical, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. The sun will come out. When? Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I wish it would, man. It needs to rain for like a oh, week straight. Yeah, and like some heavy thunder. <laughs> yeah, and like, like a big... Like, it's going to flood all the people living in the low area rains for like a week. I want to see New Jersey on I the news. I love a good like thunderstorm yeah, yeah. like that. Oh, just yeah. like, you know, the other night. Like when it gets like real dark, it real fast. Yeah, like yeah. when it's like, uh, well, not when it's bright, bright, but it's like it just, all of a sudden it just gets like boom. Dark, like that dark gray. You yeah, just yeah. see that dark gray come rolling Comes in. Comes rolling and you're like, in, you're like yeah. oh. Yeah. And then you get one. that uh, horse pussy smell. <laughs> <laughs> And then you wonder where the podcast comes to a halt on this one. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Uh. <laughs> the uh, Dolly Parton's hit "I Will Always Love You" was uh, composed and released ten years before this movie. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier, but um, that was uh, rearranged for this. In the beginning of the movie, they credit extra songs to dolly parton i was like what she yeah. wrote she wrote well, extra she songs wrote, but she that. wrote that because like, this yeah. was a play years before so yeah uh, she added songs to the she wrote three songs yeah. like you were saying and i don't think they might have been some of the songs that were cut maybe maybe yeah. oh yeah but i will always love you obviously uh was, yeah whitney made that arranged, humongous yeah. like a decade later that must have made dolly a lot of money well i read this is one of the little things i saw about this song specifically it came out and whenever it came out like 72 or something like that and it was a huge hit on the country church and elvis what's his name colonel tom reached out to dolly parton Parker. and said elvis wants to sing this song and she was like awesome and he's like elvis needs 50 percent of the publishing rights or something like that and she was like can't do it nice and she Sorry. turned down elvis and so like you know she's like everybody was like what are you doing? Who do you and, think you are? Yeah. And so she kept the publishing rights and she's like, it's all good. She's like, Whitney made me a 
ton of money. So, <laughs> or she bought Dollywood with Whitney money. That's what she said. Something like that. So, Dang. good for her to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like she was a young kid, a young woman, and they were probably like pressuring her, like the king wants to do your song, and yeah. And he needed to have publishing about, rights. Think about that time. You know, everybody in her ear was telling her, you do this, do this, oh, do this, yeah. do this. And she didn't do it. No, right. it's good for her. And that's why she has Dollywood. Hello, do you think she has anything to do with that? It's just her name. She makes like a little. <laughs> she makes a commercial every now and, she, and then. And she gets like, you know, $100,000 a year for yeah. them letting her use her name. I bet more than that. Wow. I got a Enough couple, to get her face next face. I got look. a couple of people <laughs> that were up for the uh, roles that Bert and Dolly played. Hmm. Um, up for the sheriff role also uh, were Larry Hagman and Willie Nelson. Oh, well, that's I a, thought was two completely different people. I mean, yeah. geez. I mean Willie Nelson, I understand for singing, right? I and Larry guess. Hagman because Dallas was huge at the time. Yeah. So, I mean. Interesting. Eh, that's better with Burroughs. And for Dolly, they had uh, Barbara Mandrell okay. and Crystal Gale. Oh, both country singers. So they were going for country singer all the way with that role. Yeah, yeah. I guess with Texas, I guess. that. I, I mean, I don't know fitting. Like if in the play it was, I don't know. I never saw the play. Do you remember the Mandrell sisters? The I do. They TV had their show? variety show. Yeah, yeah. I have two Early other. Years. I have two other people that were also up for Sheriff Ed Earl. And, or we're not up for, but I guess we're considered. Uh, we're Chris Christopherson and Gene Hackman. Oh, well, I could see oh, man, Gene Hackman would not have been good. I don't think so. Chris either. Christopherson, Chris Christopherson, Christopherson he could have worked, sing. Yeah. And, but um, my favorite scene in the whole movie was that Dolly Parton Burt Reynolds duet in the bed with him rapping the ta- the, the Japanese slingshot scene. <laughs> that was my favorite scene in the whole movie. Love that scene. Here's they, a, they needed more Dolly and Bert in the middle of the movie. There's like a half hour where they're not in the movie. I was like, which was what are they weird. Doing? Yeah, <laughs> they did the football game, then they did them driving the, ro- to the football oh, the ro- game, then the they Robert Mandan. Fucking part. all. The- I did enjoy the Robert Mandan parts. Yeah, he was fun, but he was hardly in it. Charles Durning was bare- not even in it really. He didn't come in until way. That late. was a cameo. Yeah, his biggest part in the movie. Like ninety he's, minutes he's in like was he was on the, he was in a picture on the door that was it. <laughs> he's um yeah he's fourth build oh, he's and he's already agent. in the movie. I mean Man. to be in it that that he, little he does be, that that little butt shake before he <laughs> <laughs> he starts singing. But uh, the chicken ranch which you mentioned is located in Lagrange, Texas, and that was the inspiration for the ZZ Top song. Is it still open? Lagrange. I don't know if it's still open or not. Yeah. I was surprised that this. I I don't remember this movie ending on such kind of like a bummer. Yeah. I assumed like they were going to rally the troops and open the ranch back up, but it was just like nope. <laughs> that was it. I saw there was a sequel to this. Was there? Oh. Yeah, like uh, a plague sequel, and it didn't last. It lasted like twenty oh, so days never or something like that. No. Best little whorehouse in Texas again, or something like that. Something like that, and and she's. The Dolly Parton character is pulled out of retirement to come to Vegas and help some floundering brothel there or something like that. So yeah, I, it, I it didn't sound, sound like it did very well. Yeah, I don't think it, <laughs> it doesn't sound like it would no, be no, fun. No, no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> um, this is the fourth of of five movies that featured Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise. The others were Cannibal Run Two. Cannibal yeah, Run, yeah, Cannibal yeah. Run Two, yes. Wait, so this is the f- was he in Stroke Race too? He's a, it says here the second of five or the fourth of five movies featuring Bert and Dom. The others being Smokey and the Bandit Two, oh. the Cannibal Run, yeah, Cannibal is. Run Two. This movie, was yeah, the I fifth, forget, doesn't have the fifth movie. That's not fair. That I mean, yeah, he is in Smoking the Bandit. Too. This is the second of the five, not directed get, by Hal Needham. They didn't give you the fifth movie. No, I thought I had all five there. That's weird. Bad job. I yeah. can't think of it. No, I can't either. Uh, so, well, it's something out there. You guys can figure it out on your own. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> And then DM us. Yeah, I gave you guys a lot of other stats. So, yeah, come on. Where are you guys at? Come on, people. Dial in. Dial in now. <laughs> um, of all of the films that Colin Higgins directed, this is the only one not to receive an Oscar nomination for Best Original Song. 
Nine to Five saw its title tune nominated, while Foul, Foul Play had the Barry Manilow song Ready to Take a Chance Again was nominated. So, I remember yeah. that song. That's a good song. Ready to take a chance again. Ready to put my love on the line for you. There you go. Burt Reynolds and Tom DeLuise were in the end together. The end. You mentioned that earlier. I said that for (laughs) Burt Reynolds' top four, I think. Or maybe Tom DeLuise's top four. I probably said it for both. What movie is that? Uh, Burt Reynolds is like suicidal. He's trying to kill himself, and they're... They're both in an insane asylum, right? Yeah. Or uh, whatever you I you haven't know. seen that one in a long time. Yeah, that's time. a long, yeah. that's way back. That, um, that my favorite date, like, song in this one was Sneaking Around. I love that song. Sneaking it was, Around with You. Was that the one that they sang? Or two. Was that the one that they do sang what in his lovers in her room? Do. Whatever they're sneaking around. Was that the one they sang in her in his house? When yeah. he had the red thing about it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's such a great that's song. That's the best scene in the movie. For, yeah. for sure. They needed more scenes with Dolly Parton and Burt Reynolds oh, yeah, together. Sure, yeah. They 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 were they were good chemistry yeah, on screen. They were very good. Yeah. And on it's almost like they didn't realize that because they didn't have them on the screen together that much. They didn't. No. I mean Burt Reynolds and Jim Neighbors together, not as funny or as sexy as Don DeLuise. Uh, Tom no. DeLuise. I was gonna say Don DeLuise and Burt Reynolds as Dolly Rob, Parton. I like and the, Burt Reynolds. Uh, one of the lines I like that uh Robert Mandon, uh as Senator uh Wingwood said to Ed Earl, he said, Be careful of the box, one elected official to another. <laughs> Dude, by the way, Burt Reynolds had a line in this movie that I actually, as I'm watching this, went, oh, Burt, not, not good, man. What was it? When she's like, when he's, when they were fighting at the end and, oh. and, he, and she said something about, you'll never be a senator now. And he's like, well, it's better than being a whore. I was like, oh, she called. I got that what, is uncalled for. I got what she called him before that. Oh, what did what, what she say? She called him a chicken shit sheriff in a chicken shit town. And then he said, well, it's better than being a whore. Man. That was that was rough. That's an argument ender. That's a Well, you can just see that took the wind out of her sail. She was oh, just like, man. fuck. She had nothing. There was nothing. She was like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but only because he was being. Oh, oh he was wow. dick. That dude. was terrible. That's like when that girl asked Jim Neighbors, how's your tally whacker hanging? <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> That the like the first and last. How about me? Jump up and down. I have two black eyes. <laughs> the first and last like all encompassing hooker song, like the one where they're talking about like no tattoos and no uh, no drinking. I'm like, <laughs> you run a whorehouse, and you don't want anybody drinking there. Drinking's legal. Can you tell yes. me what, what year? And uh, then the last song where they're all like telling they're telling where they're gonna go, and Dolly Parton's just like, I'll be fine. They're like, well. Yeah, you'll be fine. Can you we me? will not be fine. We're all unemployed whores. <laughs> and they're all going to go off and do like amazing things now. Like, I, I, you know what? I think it would be governor of California. I'm can just going to go do that Can now. you tell me uh, <laughs> what school Senator Wingwood went to and what uh, year he graduated? No. No. <laughs> I don't know. How. They said he was Aggie, class oh, of 49. Ag- oh, because he was very oh, excited when they won that game. Yeah. And when. Uh, 49. When, Wait, when 49. Wrote, class of 1949. When's this supposed to be taking place? I guess 82. Why did I feel this was like a 60s movie or something like that? They, they went through the 60s time period. Oh, wow. I kind of thought it was. To drop the, you off in present time. Weren't the cars like 60s ish or something like that? Well, the car. This was the early eighties. Cars were just crappy. Yeah, you had. You wow, had, I really thought this had, was yeah, like cars didn't look great like they do da- nowadays. Uh, yeah. yeah, I could have sworn they referenced something like as if it was. Yeah, I don't know. I think you might be getting it mixed up with something else. No, I really. Just, well, Jim Neighbors in like, the beginning, he said that trouble started seven years ago. Yeah, and so he was. So he started, started in the seventies. Se- yeah, yeah, and then. This he was place. he was wait, by, at that wait time. Wait, hang on, hang on. He was sheriff. This took place over seven years. The story? No, between when Jim Neighbors talks in the beginning to when he talks at the end, and he says, "I'm sh- now I'm sheriff." Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. Now he's giving the update seven years later. Okay, so it's a seven year, you know, hmm. it's seven years between those two points. Yeah. So maybe that was 1982. So it was maybe so 1975. 75? Yeah. Still, it still felt more. Yeah. 
60 ish. Throw or spack or sh- than that. Yeah. Man. I guess one cars look like 60s cars. I don't know. But I mean, you would have seen older yeah, cars in 75. Too, I mean. Yeah, even at a, in 82, you would see it. The 60s car from the 70s isn't that old. No. Nah. Yeah. I mean, the play was written in like 1972 or something like that. I guess that, maybe that's why I just thought it was like earlier. I don't know. Right. Certainly doesn't matter. Yeah, it really doesn't. <laughs> This is Cole Higgins uh, or Colin Higgins' only R-rated film. Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't only really do like four. <laughs> I feel we've talked well, no, about he him wrote a couple a times. Lot more. He, he did foul he play. Directed, he did nine he to five four. in this. Yeah. He directed so, four, but I think he did okay for. Uh, but I'm just for, saying, like, with an he didn't eight. have that many chances. I mean, to his do body was movies. riddled with AIDS. What did you want him to do, dude? <laughs> I didn't want him to do anything. <laughs> I'm just not really that impressed that out of four of his movies, one was R-rated. I don't know. I don't think I but care. But he also wrote a lot of movies. Huh? Yeah, but yeah. that's the only one that was R rated. I think he I guess, said directed. Yeah. I don't know. He it said it's only, his it. only R rated film that he directed. Doesn't say, doesn't say oh. directed. Yeah, that's a weird thing. Film. Like this time period, 1982, is like right right before AIDS. And like everybody gets wiped out. Damn, I thought you were going to say right before PG 13. And I was going to be like, <laughs> I think it was a little later. But okay. You're like, AIDS, okay. Because <laughs> yeah. this is like a PG 13 movie a I think year P- later. PG 13 was uh, 80, whenever. Uh, the first PG thirteen I mean, movie was Wolverine. Say, no, yeah, well, uh, PG Red Dawn, movies Red Dawn, with nudity yeah. in it. But I'm saying, like, this was there was no bad words, not like nothing, not even like a, a shit. like a son of a bitch here and there, yeah. and damn it. But well, he used that like, salty language that got bleeped. When out. they were bleeping him off the TV, I was like, did yeah, we just was- see that scene? And there was nothing <laughs> bleepable about that thing. But um, I was like, what is be- what is going on? I was like, hey man. But, yeah, this DVD isn't censored. I'm they like, really could have. I mean, I don't know if they would have ever gotten a PG rating with the word whorehouse in the yeah, title in anyway. Title. So maybe they didn't care that they got an R, but they, they could have put some blouses on that two girls. They could have put two blouses on those two girls and then it would have been PG because they oh, yeah. no one but gives a shit about is, no one I gives a shit about 50 be. guys asses. I think if junk. you take whorehouse out of the title, you might be able to keep that nudity in and be PG <laughs> and and probably make double your money because now it's PG and yeah, airplane has nudity that's PG. Yeah, that's true, right? And that's all the nudity that we saw in this. It wasn't anything. Beastmaster, oh, Tanya, yeah, uh, yeah. What's Tanya your name? Harding, no Tanya <laughs> Roberts, <laughs> Tanya. <laughs> both dead. Wait. <laughs> she just wishes she was. Um, Nancy, did you have any? Uh, whatever the hell her name is, Brian. We didn't get any American. notes. Did you have any notes? I know I've gone through my notes. Andy, no, I, I only you, took uh, those three notes. Have you wiped out your notes? That was for the other podcast. Yeah, yeah. you took three notes about what you've been watching, and that's <laughs> and your none notes for the for movie this. that we wanted to talk about today. No, well, I watched it late last night. You better. I didn't I watched remember. it last night too. It was late last night for Andy as but well. But ten o'clock, that's when I remember. Andy watched it nine o'clock. I did nine at nine oh. ten yesterday I realized I was like, oh shit, I gotta watch it. And movie. I started it around eight and finished at ten, so I come on. Close to midnight. I'm sorry. You're not gonna get anybody <laughs> feeling sorry for you over here, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. <laughs> But I thought we would get into the Rotten Tomatoes. All right. Who wants to go first? I don't have a score. I'll go yet. first. Hold on. Or do we have to? Do we have to have Brian go first? Right? Because well, do you want me to go so Brian can say? Oh, that's what I was going to say. No, we'll let Brian go first. Okay, I'm going to. I did like this movie. Oh boy. Uh, um, I would. I'd watch it again. So oh I'm going to give it a, a 67. That's a good score. I like that score. I like uh, that score as well. I'm going to go with a. This gets the score that I gave Grease 2 in error. Uh-oh. Grease 2, I, I have since deducted, I think, every time I give That's five less points. So if it wasn't a 30 a, before. Direct this to a certain someone. It's a 30 talk now. To somebody, talk to somebody Grease about this Grease one. 2 is a 30 now. I know I've been giving it less points as we go along. So at some point. It'll <laughs> Dana, I think this is being aimed but, and directed at you. I'm giving this a 60. And that's not a bad 60. This is a. No, I, I, I would watch it. Michelle actually was pissed that I watched this yesterday yeah, without wants her. To watch she said, I want to watch this. I'm like, I'll watch it again with you. I'm like, it was very fun. Um, I, I think my biggest problem with it is that that middle like 20 minutes where. Could either Bert be cut and Bert and, and, and cut. Dolly aren't on the screen at all, and it's just like a bunch of guys dancing around in the shower and then taking a 
bus and then going to the the whorehouse. I'm just like, oh my god! Don't forget Ooh, the flat tower. That, tire. The fl- oh, flat tower. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, very funny that the old man that took them there was getting laid there too because oh, yeah. he, he was, was like sneaking, sneaking out. out. Oh, that was so <laughs> was funny like, when he they was paid sneaking for him out. to get. They're like, hey, <laughs> you want to drive us to the chicken ranch? We'll pay for a blowjob for you. But um, that was very, very I, uh, funny. When he was I, there, I think yeah. my sixty for this is is based on. Like yeah. if there was I, 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 I'm when, now next week we'll have to get Michelle's score. We'll find out. We'll retro. Well, she yeah, she was uh, like we'll cuz Jason in. asked her and she was like I haven't seen it in forever, but I love that but movie. But she did but, say she liked it. But and we this had so again. many more oh, like toe tapping. Now, there, it's all country, so I'm not going to remember them, but there's that song I, was, I sang earlier. I was tapping around, my foot along, right. enjoying it much more than Grease 2. I mean, Grease 2 has no memorable music. I'll never watch it again, but I'll watch this again. I, will, I, I would watch again. this again. I think we should have a part. I think that should be the next party. And I might, I might uh, watch it in some way, eliminating that like middle twenty good. minutes. Speaking of, I mean, I I'm haven't given my out. scores, so I'll say a lot of the same thing you guys said. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I laughed a lot. Uh, there was some extended parts in the middle again that could have been edited out completely, or bring in Bert or even at Dolly least at cut least away. one of them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, something. But um, I would watch this again, and I give it a 75. Nice. Um, All right. And that's a, uh, and that's a, a, a happy score, I think. That's and, a solid uh, score. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so what did we learn today? Rewatchable. Grease 2? Yeah. 25? And what, uh, <laughs> I want to recommend next week, we're watching what, Andy? Next week's Eating Raul. And I don't know if I know any of the actual cast members of that, which is I rare can't, for us. Off the top of my head, think of any of the cast members. I can't even remember watching it. I think I did. It's the, it's, the movie is on HBO Max for everybody out there. So uh, watch it's, it's it. It's a dark comedy. Like it is. I remember watching that when I was young and being like, I saw what, it once. Whoa, whoa, what's happening? Here? I saw it once again as a, a as a young as a young and as well. And I uh, I can't recall. Man. It, any it's, of it really it's got a weird plot yeah. to it but uh yeah that's yeah we'll save the plot for you for next week but um well yeah watch it so you can watch it for next week and uh you can catch us everywhere the exciting and new podcast preach um, say it on twitter yeah facebook there it is instagram Keep going. Uh, that messed me up big time, I Sorry, think. Um, TikTok, <laughs> Facebook, Spreaker, YouTube, everywhere you can find podcasts, Spotify, Apple. He said it's bam, bam, the exciting bam, new bam, podcast. Bam, I'm Jason. Bam, you can find bam, me bam, on bam, the Jazoo on bam, Instagram, Jazoo74 on Twitter. Bam, 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 bam. Andy, AE Gonzo1. And, and I'm Brian, Papa Bad Kitty.